And like I said, there's just so many wonderful truths that we can dwell on. But if there was, if there's one truth, one truth that we could focus in on, I kept, I kept coming back to this one simple truth of the goodness of God. That he is good all the time, as Mark said. And, and I thought, I kept coming back to that one because I thought if I, if I could really believe that one, of all, of all these things, if I could really believe that God is good and he's gracious and he's loving and he's kind, that, that the nature of God, that he's good, then I'd have a, I've got a chance. I've got a hope. You see, there's, there's so many various entities or, or attributes, sorry, of God that we could explore. His power, his holiness, his righteousness, his, his faithfulness, his perfection, he's all-knowing. And, and he's the only one worthy of worship. There's so many ones that we could focus in on. But the fact that he is good and that he's good to you and me makes all of that truth available. You see, he could be all powerful, but if he's not good to you and me, then we're in trouble. And it doesn't help us. You see, if, if I don't, I, I need to know, A, that, that he is good to me, but then I have to believe that he's good to me. Because if I don't believe that, if I question his goodness, then I'm going to question his willingness to offer me love and grace. I'm going to question whether or not he's going to be patient with me. Especially when I'm struggling. Especially when I'm already feeling the, the voice of shame and the voice of inadequacy just you know, ringing around in my head. If I don't know he's good for me, then chances are I'm going to begin to retreat from him. And I'm going to try unsuccessfully, but I'm going to try to hide from him. And I will, I will doubt that he'll answer my prayers, so I probably won't even offer them up anymore. And I, I won't believe that he's going to provide for me what I need in that moment. I'll question that he will really accept me. That he'll really love and embrace me because I just screwed up again. And so what I do now is I begin to listen to what the flesh offers. As it, as it tries to convince me what is really true about me, true about God and about other people, and I begin to just cower under the weight of that shame, that weight of inadequacy. And now I got to go do something to feel better, to take the edge off, to take the pain away. And so now it offers me that sin. It offers me that temptation. And so we do it. Believing that has got more life than, than God does in that moment, which that sin leads to more shame and more guilt, which then leads to more sin as I try to seek comfort. So I need to know the, the goodness of God, the immensity of God's love for you and I. But again, not just in a theological way, but in a, in a personal way to you and me.